أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم النبيين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله المجاهدين وأصحابه المتقين ومن تبع نهجه إلى يوم الدين My dear brothers, my dear sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And a جمعة مباركة to you and to yours um, This week we will round up our presentation on the second rail um, or the first rail remember we're proceeding in two on two rails two routes uh, but parallel to each other one of them are the ayat in the quran concerning bani israel and the other one are the hadiths of the prophet and ayat concerning Bani Umayyah and oligarchies and dynasties and kingdoms and monarchies that are neither a khilafa nor an imama leadership. So uh, today we will round up uh, these ayat concerning Bani Israel. Of course, we're going to continue uh, in the weeks to come, but next week, inshallah, we will switch to uh, the uh, we will switch to shedding light on Bani Umayyah and all the other Benis who ruled over the Muslims uh, in a manner that does not fit the definition of the Khulafa nor the Imams. Uh, last week, and here's where we continue, last week we were speaking about or explaining the ayah in Surah Al-Isra that has to do with the word Ibad. وَقَضَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عُلُوًا كَبِيرًا فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا So Banu Israel as stated and predicted and foreseen and prophesied or prophesied in the Quran and in the Torah either or are going to cause a dysfunction of the world order a malfunction of the state of affairs of the world in history twice and they shall reach an elevated position power position in world affairs that is way above the rest of the others uh, they would say the rest of humanity or the other goyim gentiles so in this ayah فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا when the first uh, promise is fulfilled meaning when they when they are meaning Bani Israel, when they are positioned 
in departments, ministries, governments, establishments, when they hold positions of control and command, when that first time happens, and, and there's, as I mentioned in the previous presentation, there are, if you look, if you go through Islamic tafsir literature or some history books, you will find that there is a di a different interpretations, scholarly ijtihad, as to when that first time was. And many of these interpreters or mufassirin, they identify the first time as being uh, somewhere in the pre muhammadi era, in the centuries before the final prophet. My, under, my humble understanding is no, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about Bani Israel's first serious worldwide causation of malfunction of the world order, that first time was after the Quran, after the Prophet, and after the after the Prophet was sent to mankind, the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, and after the final scripture was revealed, the Quran. So Allah is speaking because we said. Uh, Previously, that Bani Israel were involved in widespread uh, and serious corruptions before this, these ayat were revealed, the ayat that we're speaking about here. And we said that the uh, article or the word Iva delivers the meaning of a future event. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا the first, when the first time comes to pass, the first time when Bani Israel are going to be responsible for this planetary disruption, and we we spoke about what the word fasad means, and the verb latufsidunna means, and it is emphatically stated. لَتُفْسِدُنَّ The lamb that precedes the verb and the noon المؤكدة the emphatic noon or n that follows the verb تُفْسِدُنَّ This happened after the advent of Islam meaning the final revelation to mankind. And we concentrated, and this is very important, even if I have to uh, recall or remind you of it, because it's extremely important. We made, we tried our best to explain the difference between Abid and Ibad. Uh, the word Abid, everyone fits into that description. And it is usually translated as in the, tr not my translation, but in other translations, it's either servant or slave. I use the word subject. The word Abid is a plural and it includes all of Allah's subjects in the world, regardless of their political or their ideological or their religious or their theological affiliations. It includes everyone because all of us are Allah's subjects 
in everything that makes up our existence, our respiratory system, our digestive system, our nervous system, our lymphatic system, uh, our dermatological expression, the color of our skin, uh, all of these are determined by Allah. They're not determined by me. I can't tell my liver right now, stop working. I can't do that to my pancreas. I can't do that to the flow of blood in my veins. All of these are working according to Allah's will. So all of us are abid in that sense. But when it comes to ibad, the the, sa the, the same um, word, but in another the same um, source word, but in another configuration, it means those who have subjected their willpower, their resolve, their determination, their freedom of choice, they subjected all of that to Allah. So Allah subhanahu now is in control of what they do because they are doing it conscious of Allah in obedience to Allah, in conformity to Allah. So they are ibadullah. This would exclude individuals and people who are in rebellion against Allah. We cannot say they are ibad Allah. And we covered two ayat previously, one in Surah Al-Ma'idah, the other one in Surah Al-Furqan, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when he, he reveals the word ibad in these ayat, one of them in reference to the theological wayward Christians, and the other one in reference to people who go astray in life, he refers to them as ibad, not in this life when they had freedom of choice. He refers to them in the life to come, in al-akhirah, where there's no longer freedom of choice. So their resolve belongs to Allah at, in that life, in the life to come. That's why they are called ibad there. So understanding this, and it's important to understand this, to, to try to get a grip on who is going to liberate the Holy Land from colonialist Zionism and Zionist colonialism. It's extremely important to understand. It's not going to be some nationalists. It's not going to be some sectarians. It's going to be those whose will is subject to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything he or she does. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا uh, Excuse me. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا When the first promise comes to pass, meaning you, Bani Israel, in the first time, you are going to be in positions of what we would call right now worldwide control. It doesn't necessarily have to be very obvious. As you can see in today's world, 
the clutch that Bani Israel has on the levers of power is not obvious. If you look at what is happening in Ukraine, which has uh, an Israeli, a Bani Israeli involvement from head to toe, it's not obvious. Of course, except for, you know, maybe a few individuals who really dig into this subject very, this political and military matter very deeply, then they will discover that everything that is happening in Ukraine today, the war that may erupt into what many commentators are saying is the third world war the the clock is ticking and we are approaching they say the moment of uh, a, an existential annihilation everyone who looks deeply into this will find that the Zionist Israelis are at the core of this subject, of this very dangerous worldwide development, but they are not obvious. So at the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the, this is not the first time that Bani Israel are in this position. There was a time before when they were in that, in this position, and that was the time when Allah's Prophet was sent to mankind and they threatened in a, a local sense in Al Medina, Banu Nadir, Banu Qaynuqa, and Banu Quraidha. And regionally, they were a threat to the Islamic uh, mission unto humanity as they were located in Khaybar, in Tayma, and in other areas of the Northern Arabian Peninsula. And they were a worldwide threat. They were a threat to the world order as they had their uh, connections with the Byzantines, who would later on find common purpose, the Bani Israel and the Byzantines would find common purpose through the Umawi uh, snatchers of power from the legitimate Khalifa and the legitimate Imam, Imam Ali, Al Imam Al Hassan, Al Imam Al Hussein, the Bani Israel call them the Israelis of that time, and uh, the Byzantines, the imperialists of that time, they found common purpose, and they could not defeat the Prophet of Allah. They could not defeat the legitimate rulers of the Muslims, who are the Khulafa and the Imams. So they waited for an illegitimate ruler to take power, and that was Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. He took power, he grabbed power through civil wars, Muslims killing Muslims, and then uh, they took it out on Al Imam Al Hussein. Uh, so, anyways. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we go back, we're referencing ourselves in the ayah. When the first time comes to pass that you, Bani Israel, are going to be in positions of command and control, whether it is politically, or whether it is ideologically, or whether it is religiously, or whether it is militarily, through proxies, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ Allah says, when this first time, remember right now, our, our attention is zeroing in 
on their failed uh, alliances, Bani Israel's alliances with the Mushrikeen of the Arabian Peninsula that culminated in the battle of Al Ahzab, and then Bani Israel's uh, attempt to um, undo the Islamic self determination that spread out from Al Medina in their stronghold in Khaybar. Here is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا أُولِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ These ibad of Allah, now here we come, we revisit the word ibad. These people who have subjected their personal uh, freedom of choice and their social resolve, all of that has been now totally formulated by Allah. They are doing the will of Allah. There's a hadith, ما زال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أصبح سمعه الذي يسمع به etc. etc. What this hadith means is that my servant, my subject continues to approach me and come nearer to me by his voluntary conformity to me, by his voluntary deeds in moving towards me. So Al-Abid, we as those who are subjects to Allah, we do more than just obeying Allah in our rituals. We obey Allah every step of the way in our life so that Allah becomes the ear that we hear with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is involved in our hearing. Per the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is involved in our seeing. عَيْنَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهَا يَدَهُ الَّذِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا He becomes the involved in the hand that we use for confrontation. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا There's a, a conjunction of words here. Two words, عِبَادًا لَنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادَنَا which is a lesser a designation or a lesser emphasis of the word عِبَاد. But when Allah Jalla wa'ala, when he worded this saying ibadan lana, which means ibad who specifically and honorably belong to us, meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ba'athna alaykum ibadan lana. And this is one of the very highest designations that any person can have when everything they do is in conformity and in compliance with Allah Jalla Sha'nu. Ba'athna alaykum ibadan lana. Allah says that He has sent against you, Bani Israel. Subjects who are honorably and specially belonging to us, uli ba'sin shadid, with stern power. This is in reference to the Islamic self determination represented by committed Muslims. There were not a few Sahabis, five or ten of them, who could do this.
This was an aggregate of committed Muslims from Ahli Bayti Rasulillah, from Al Muhajireen, and from Al Ansar, who managed to bring down the high and holier than thou intrigue of Bani Israel, animosity, and warfare against Islamic self-determination in the Arabian Peninsula, and thereafter to follow them to Al-Quds. And in that particular incident, to liberate Al-Quds, Jerusalem, and the Holy Land from that conjunction of Zionism and imperialism before the Zionism and imperialism of our day today. Ba'athna alaykum ibadan lana uli ba'sin shadeed. Muhammadun Rasulullah wa alladhina ma'ahu ashidda'u ala al-kuffar ruhama'u baynahum. These committed Muslims were with the Prophet and they were stern and severe in their military encounter with these enemies of Allah and the enemies of the committed Muslims. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ جَاسَ خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ جَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ خِلَالَ in, in the uh, books of fiqh, takhleel al-asaba. You see, when, when you have your hand, fingers through fingers like that, when you that's called, what happens is there is penetration. When, when we call a person, he is my khalil, which means he has emotionally and affectionately penetrated me. I am his Khalil. I have emotionally and affectionately and cordially penetrated him. It is more than being a friend. It is being um, uh, a relationship of uh, interaction, inter uh, relationship. So in this ayah, فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ They went, these committed Muslims went, uh, when we say خِلَالَ جَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ It's like in today's language, you say, if there's a security force, we say they combed the area. They went through it very thoroughly they combed the precinct or the district this fajasu khilal al-diyar is the modest operandi of the islamic military force when it took on bani israel in khaybar and tayma and northern arabia and thereafter it took on bani israel in the holy land uh, if even floss, when when you floss, when uh, some uh, a person flosses his or her teeth, that is called a khilal. It's taken from the same motion and movement, something that is penetrating through the crevices of the psycho. In this case, the psycho, this this society of the enemy. فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْعُولًا And this has become a, a promise that has been fulfilled. 
ثم رددنا لكم الكرة عليهم ثم there, there is a few words that connect verbs with verbs and sentences with sentences there's wa, there's fa, and there's thumma thumma, when you use it to connect one event with another the preceding with the latter means that there's going to be a an extended time lag between the first incident and the second ثم رددنا لكم الكرة عليهم Inshallah, we will um, uh, continue with this uh, probably not next week because we're going to shift back to the rail concerning Bani Umayyah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand uh, truth and justice and follow through on it and the ability to understand falsehood and injustice to take it on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh